This is our mining robot. It's designed to cut into lunar permafrost, which has water that would really transform our ability to explore the moon and everywhere else in the solar system. There's a drum that grinds the permafrost. Uh, it's actually cutting in the downward direction, has steel teeth with carbide tips. Uh, we, we also have a narrower drum, so uh, this was uh, early in the contest, we were using the narrow drum. The, the narrow drum can cut through a very hard material. Uh, the, our, our, our concrete came out uh, substantially harder than we had planned and intended, uh, and uh, we, were, we were using the, the narrow drum to kind of get uh, dialed in with the, the cutting uh, process that we need. So here, here uh, uh, Brandon, my, uh, my student, is uh, uh, making, making nice, careful, uh, smooth cuts. He's having to use a camera to guide the cut location uh, because the, the, the head is really narrow. So uh, once we dig stuff out, basically we're going to need to haul it to a place to extract the water. So that's us driving 500 meters. And we have kind of a crude autonomous system, so Brandon is uh, keeping an eye on it and basically periodically reorienting uh, the orientation robot to, uh, to stay on track. So here's uh, day seven of our 15-day uh, durability demonstration. And uh, we've, uh, we've upgraded to the wide mining head, which uh, it was a lot trickier to dial in the, uh, the cutting, but uh, uh, here it's, it's running fully autonomous. Uh, we have inertial measurement units that are uh, measuring the orientation of each of the angles of the parts of the robot. And we're, we're using those to just plan a cut. So, so we, we're trying to maintain a, st a steady, consistent cut angle. Uh, there's lots of monitoring that has to happen here. Oh, that there was an example of I'm able to pull the mining head off. Uh, it, there's a detachable tool coupler. So here we are hauling, and uh, the hauling was still not really so. So it's autonomous, but it's not uh, uh, operating very reliably. I'm having to stop it periodically, reorient the robot. So there, I'm dumping off the material, and then we drive 500 meters back to the back into our cut pit. So here's a close up of. The robot driving back and forth, relatively steady, not, not perfect. Uh, by day 13, we're, at, uh, we're pretty much reliably cutting fully autonomously. The concrete is curing, and uh, we've, we've switched to just mining the lower half. It's, uh, it's actually, we get much better recovery uh, just, just working the lower half of the deposit at, at this point. It's closer to the robot. We, uh, we start to bounce when we hit the, the hard stuff up high. Our teeth are starting to wear back. So this is, this is a great thing about uh, doing a long-term demonstration like this. You get to see what, what parts wear, what parts break. Then a lot of uh, uh, great, uh, great examples of like how stuff will, uh, will fail. So here's our fully autonomous uh, uh, driving is pretty much dialed in. It varies by a meter or so. Uh, but basically, uh, it, so that is 100% fully autonomous driving a meeting sandwich. It uh, does work pretty nicely. It's using a vision guidance system based on a kind of a QR code marker you can see there. Here's one of the things that went wrong. On day eight, we're mining along and uh, the mining had broke in half, fell off. Uh, there was a, a tool coupler that was 3D printed uh, that we uh, we have just replaced with just some some hard mounted bolts.